Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, Mr. Eric here, and this is going to be our March IE Madness uh, tournament video, right? So I released a video about a week ago where I presented the bracket, which I'll throw up on the screen here. And what we're doing today is we are going to go through each of these matches. I've got all my notes down here in front of me. I'm going to go through each round, talk about the winners, talk about why I chose them as the winners. Ultimately, we're going to get down to who is number one in these in this group of 10 different IEMs. Before we get into each of the specific matchups, I just want to talk about a couple of, of testing things and how I went through this. Again, these are head to head matchups. So, you know, I only tested one IEM versus another IEM. I'm not thinking whole picture wise. I did all of my testing using the XCAN as my source. Um, this is just kind of my go to, you know, IEM portable player. Um, that I just linked my phone through Bluetooth. I know some people will be critical of that, but it's just, it's a practical thing for me and it's just what I normally listen to IEMs with, okay? The, the other testing method that I did was I have two different playlists and I pretty much would just would just listen to a couple of songs from each playlist. One is a more acoustic folk based playlist, which is what I listen to a lot of the times. And then the other one is just some more recent kind of pop songs that I enjoy just to give an alternative, you know, genre to compare to. So I would listen to a couple of songs of each. And then in particular, I would also just listen to one song with each IEM, which is uh, Scary Pockets cover of Bo Burnham's song um called get your hands up or something like that i don't even know what it's called actually but i just that's been an earworm of mine lately so i i'll link to that one down below as well i've just been enjoying that song so i listen to that one quite a bit um so with that being said let's go ahead and dive in to these matchups i'll show you the iems a little bit while i'm talking about them uh and but we'll try to keep it pretty brief between each matchup just so this video isn't super super long so our first matchup was between the QKZ HBB and the Sal Notes Zero. Now, another thing I should mention here is price isn't really a factor. It was all sound based. So accessories, comfort, um, none of that stuff is really playing into this unless it was so close on sound that I needed some sort of a tiebreaker. And then I kind of started to consider like comfort, accessories, price, those types of things. Um, so let's, let's go through the HBB first. Uh, I, th I think the HBB, you know, really good timbre on these guys. Um, I, I found it to be fairly holographic um, in its imaging presentation, much more leaning towards that end as opposed to accurate presentation. That's probably my one real criticism of the HBB is I feel like the imaging isn't great. It's engaging, but I don't feel like it's very accurate. So, you know, there is spatial information, but and there is some interesting stuff going on there. I just don't feel like it's it's super on point as far as that goes. Uh, I feel like the vocals are a bit pulled back on this guy. and But overall, I feel like it's a pretty balanced sound. Um, highs are rolled off a little bit. I, I did think because of that, that the clarity was kind of lacking on the HBV as compared to the zero although i do prefer the base of the hbb and th felt like the base on it was really strong and full okay the as far as the zeros go i've already reviewed this one and i really love these guys uh notes that i had on these uh, instantly i felt like they had more clarity than the hbb i felt like they were more balanced overall in their frequency response had better highs um but not as strong of bass but I feel like I felt like the bass was more in line with the rest of the frequency response. Imaging, I think, is really good on the zero, more natural, I feel like, and, and very accurate, especially when you consider the price. I just feel like I can really live with the zeros and I could go to them a lot. So my winner for this first round, we've got the zero over the QKZ HBB. So our next matchup is the Etymotic E. Let me see if I'm saying this right. ER2XR versus the Tin T2. Now, now this one's a little bit different because uh, you know the the E2, the ER2XR or however you say that, it's the only one of any of these IMs that had an attached cable, and they definitely have the most kind of interesting design. 
if you know anything about the Edemotic stuff, it, it's very, they're these basically skinny cylinder shapes and they really get shoved into your ears. So um, fit can be a little finicky with those. Like I said, I, I didn't really take that into account here, um, but that's just something to note on these different headphones. Um, and then they were going up against the 10T2s. This is the revised version. Um, and you know, these are just have been like a go to IEM and about the $50 price range for like a really long time. And there's good reason for that. So when I was listening to the T2s, I felt like nothing really stuck out as, as being bad when I was listening to them. Like they, they, they sound good pretty much overall. There's a slight upper veil I felt with them. Um, but all around they're like pretty competent and easy to listen to. Um, I love the form factor of them. I love the build of them. I think for the price, all that is really, really good. Um, there isn't tons of spatial information with these guys, but they have good base layers and texture to it. So I, I just thought all in all, this was a really, really strong sound. I kept thinking like if I was designing, you know, an IEM or like a true wireless system, like this is probably pretty close to the tuning that I would want to go with just cause it's, I feel like it's gonna be enjoyable and accessible to most people. Like I feel like this is a very, very agreeable frequency response. When I was listening to the E2, the ER2 XRs, um, I thought it was going to be really tough when I was comparing them uh, in the first few seconds. I, I do think this is also a very competent, very well tuned um, IEM. There's definitely more detail with the Edemotics here. Um, I thought they were less shouty. I thought they felt a little more refined. Um, Although I did find that there was some sibilance in the upper frequencies with these guys. Um, so ultimately sound, I felt was kind of a wash between these two, but, and this is where the tiebreaker comes in because of the price of the T2s is half as much. And because I like the form factor better and think the build is better, I gave the nod to the T2. So the T2s are going on to the next round. Okay, so jumping over to the other side of the bracket, we had our first wildcard matchup, which was the CCA FLA versus the KZ ZNA. Okay, so the the CCA FLA, I felt like these guys were just really base light, um, like shockingly base light, I thought. Um, and maybe I just wasn't getting a great seal or something with them, but you know, that factors in as well. Um, I, I did think the extension on both ends was pretty good with them, but just there was so the base was just so pulled back that I, I was kind of, you know, just I, I just wasn't really enjoying myself with with the FLAs here. I, I really think that the tuning here is they're going for a really a more technical tuning, but I just don't feel like it has the uh, technical prowess to really pull it off. So uh, the CCA, I didn't really enjoy that much. Now the, the KZ ZNA, you know, I've had a, quite a few KZs and, and they're always pretty decent for the price, but they've never really wowed me. And I think the ZNA kind of falls into this category. You know, I, I thought it sounded lowest resolution of like all of these IEMs. I thought this guy was the lowest resolution. It's probably also the cheapest IEM here though. So that's kind of understandable. I did feel like it was it was pretty natural sounding, but the bass was maybe a little overpowering. It's not crazy overpowering, but you combine that with the fact that like the the bass isn't super detailed or highly resolving, and the fact that like it kind of overblows the mid range a little bit. Plus, I found the upper end to be a little sibilant, um, but all in all, I did think this was better than the FLAs. So the KZ wins this first wild card match and goes on to the next matchup, which is versus the Tangzu Wanner. So as I was listening to uh, going back and forth between the two, I thought that the KZ's bass, it's just more pervasive. It kind of just gets into everything in the mix. But I also felt like the highs were actually also a bit clearer than on the Wanger and maybe even a little more resolving, which kind of surprised me. Uh, the bass just is too sloppy for me at times. It just doesn't do what I want it to do. If the bass was tighter and punchier, the KZ would have had a shot. But as it is, I preferred the Wanner. So with the Wanner, I, I think this is actually a pretty good IEM, especially if you're a, a bass-focused listener. Um, I, 
uh, nothing stood out as bad to me while I was listening to it. I, I did think that the, the highest frequencies were a little lower resolution. I think that the best resolution in the Wanner is in the bass. The bass is a little bit more than neutral, I would say, but it's very tight, very well controlled, very textured and detailed. So I, I really like the bass on the Wanner. So I, I found the low end really just to be nice and thick and um, enjoyable. Like I said, just detailed, but it doesn't overbear anything else. And for that reason, the Wanner was the winner of this uh, round here. Okay, so for our next matchup, we had another wild card, and this was the 10C2 versus the 10C3. So, uh, interestingly enough, right, the, in this one, we've got the C2, which is actually a bit cheaper, but it's the metal build when compared to the C3, which is a plastic build. So I thought that was interesting, and then uh, the C2 is also called the Mech Warrior, which sounds pretty cool and kind of extreme, but that really contrasts its sound signature because I found it to be rather dull and kind of lifeless sounding myself, the C2s. Um, I, I thought the frequency response was pretty balanced, but I also found the timbre to be off like a little bit, and I didn't feel like the spatial information was really too great, so it just didn't impress me very much. It was kind of dull and just boring to listen to. I didn't feel like it had any really great qualities to it. The C3, on the other hand, I actually quite enjoy. I think it's got some nice punchy bass, uh, definitely more energy than the C2s. Spatial information is much, much better on the C3. It's fun without really getting too far from neutral. Uh, I just thought it had a more believable presentation and a more enjoyable presentation overall. I thought it was, it's it's really a quite smooth, easy listening, but there's still a good amount of detail there. So yeah, easily this wildcard round goes to the 10 C3. So that puts it up against the Truth Ear Hola, or Ola, or Hala. I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it, but that's our matchup here. So here's the, here's the Truth Ear, and I did really like this. I've tried this one a little bit before. I haven't had a ton of listening time on it. But I do enjoy this IEM, um, and I know a lot of people really love it. I thought when I was going back and forth with the C3, I actually thought that the, the Truthier here was better separated. Um, I thought it was at least equal in detail, if not had a little bit more detail to it. And I definitely felt like it had more clarity in the frequency response. However, as I was going back and forth with the C3, I just felt like I liked the C3 better. Um, I felt like it was smoother. I felt like it was a little more neutral of a presentation and just it was easier to listen to and easier for me to get into and just enjoy myself with the C3. So the C3 beats the Ola and moves on to the next round. Okay, so now we're down to the final four here. And the final four, our first matchup is going to be the Zero versus the 10T2. Now with the T2s, again, I just found it really hard to argue with the T2s. Um, it's a very agreeable frequency response, like I said earlier. It's good detail for the money. There's no major flaws in it. Um, they're comfy, they're clean. I just feel like this is a good default IM to recommend to people. It's just a great starting point all around. I, I think most people would really enjoy this IEM. I did feel though like the zeros just had a little more sparkle to them, a little more clarity. They are made perhaps like a bit thinner um, in the mid range, uh, but it just feels more organic to me. I don't feel like it's as like compressed sounding. And when I say that, I mean in the dynamic range sense as the 10 T2s. So this one was really, really close for me. Uh, so again, I kind of went to the tiebreaker of just like price for it. And I mean, the zero comes in at like $20 or a little bit less, even whereas the T2 is about a $50 IEM. So I just again think when you start to bring price into the equation, then the zero is going to take it. That by no means means that the T2 is bad. Uh, I really do like this IEM and would definitely recommend it. I just think the zero just packs such a great value for the dollar. So the zero is going to the final round. So then on the other side of the bracket, we've got the Wanner, the Tangzu Wanner versus the 10C3. Now going into this, I had listened to a, the Wanner a lot more and I've really enjoyed that IEM. I thought it was really competitive with the Zero when I compared those previously before this. Um, so I thought it had a really strong chance of doing well here. 
Again, the Wanner is a very full sounding headphone, good texture in the bass, really nice full bass on this guy. The mids sound a little bit compressed dynamically to me, which is too bad because I mean, mids are really important to me as a big acoustic listener. The bass goes really deep on it though. Again, definitely the best quality of the Wanner is the bass. Um, it just perhaps isn't for like acoustic music, which, you know, again, that's one of my main genres that I like to listen to. So between the big bass and a little bit rolled off highs and a little more compressed mid range, I just thought it felt a little more distance. Again, it just doesn't do super well with acoustic music. The C3 on the other hand, uh, definitely has more prominent mid range and less bass for sure. Um, it's a little less exciting, a little less guttural, uh, you know, emotion when you're listening to it, but it's more balanced and it's more detailed in the mids and highs. Um, whereas the Wanner is more detailed in the bass. I do feel like the C3's highs are still rolled off a little bit. It definitely feels like it presents space better and there's no doubt in my mind that for acoustic music, the C3 is an easy winner. Again, I found it very, very easy to listen to and I just really enjoyed it for the acoustic music, which is why the C3 is gonna go on to the finals for me. Now again, if somebody else was doing this review, somebody that listened to other genres, more pop, hip hop, you know, electronic music, I could easily see them leaning towards the Wanner for sure. So again, if you're a bass heavy person and you really enjoy your bass, the Wanner might be the one to look for. But for me, I need a better all arounder so I can listen to everything and specifically for acoustic music. So the C3 is going to get the win for me. So our final round comes to the Zero versus the 10C3. Now the 10C3, the Zero doesn't really surprise me because I've really enjoyed that I am the whole time I've had it. The C3 was a little more of a surprise for me because I've heard almost nothing about that I am. And uh, it's really a pretty good all arounder. So this was an interesting matchup and I spent a lot of time going back and forth way more than any of the other matchups here. Um, I went back and forth with the C3 and the zero and it was close it was really 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 close they're both fantastic iems okay i do feel like a lot of what i've said before holds true here you know the c3 is just a very easy to listen to headphone very smooth good for all genres but just easy to listen to you know i was doing some work while i was going back and forth with these and and the c3 it never had any glaring issues where it like pulled me out of, you know, the experience or made me think it wasn't that good. The zero on the other hand is a bit sharper. It's a bit more sparkly. Um, it, it does have less bass. Uh, they're both, I'd say about equal in detail really all around, but just the zero is a little bit sparklier. So it's a little more exciting to listen to. They both do acoustic music really, really well. And I thought they both competed really well on the on the pop stuff too. But in the end, I just feel like the Zero is more exciting to listen to. Plus again, we if we come down and start looking at price a little bit here, then the Zero is less than half the price of the C3, which made my decision. Like I was going back and forth, back and forth. And then I just thought, well, I, I could get I could go with the C3 on some tracks and I could go with the zero on others. So ultimately, let's just look at price and consider that. And uh, that's where the zero pulls way out in front. So the zero is the March IE Madness 2023 winner. What a fantastic little IEM for, you know, only 20 bucks. It's hard for me to believe that this is this good for 20 bucks, but a lot of these competitors are really cheap and a lot of them are really good. And like I said, if you have different preferences to me, you could easily have gone with one of these other IEMs. So I, I think as far as just IEMs that I could recommend, I, in, instead of you spending like $100 on an IEM and taking a shot in the dark, my suggestion to you would be buy a Zero, buy a QKZ HBB, buy a 10T2, buy a Wanner from, from Tanzu, buy a 10C3, buy a, a Hala, right? Buy, spend a couple hundred bucks or, you know, maybe eliminate the 10T2 out of there and the 10C3 and just go with those few cheaper, like $20 ones and try yourself a range of IEMs and then pick your favorites, right? And then compare it against something else. That's what I think is the best way to pick out the stuff you really like. And especially with IEMs that are only $20, you can just, you can play around 
for weeks and weeks with different IEMs and uh, going back and forth and testing them against each other. And I think you'd have a ball and you wouldn't be spending a ton of money either. And you'd be increasing your knowledge of like what different sound signatures you enjoy with what genres. And that's what this is all about, right? It's just having some fun, trying some different things out and seeing what resonates with you. So I would encourage you set up your own bracket, do your own little test, you know, head to head test with, with some of these guys. Um, cause you'll probably come out differently for me and that's all right. That's what enjoying audio is all about. I hope you enjoyed this little test and had a little bit of fun. I will go through it. I will see who the winners are and I'll come back and I'll make a little announcement um, with that. And then I'll get in touch with you and get you your prize if you were the winner. So thank you for watching. Thanks for participating. I hope you uh, had a good time. Subscribe, like, definitely stay tuned for more reviews, IEM reviews, headphone reviews, other audio equipment. That's what we're about here on this channel. I appreciate you being here and I will hopefully see you in the next one.